Hello and welcome to Adventure Story Channel video my dear friends. Today we will continue our part 2 lesson about steam to buy engines. We will see again some of the cards which is uh, here in the program. Uh, this is a navigational map where we can see all the details in all our system. So we will continue with the control. Uh, there is a start menu, a work menu and a stop menu which shows detailly how to start, how to operate and how to uh, stop all the system. It will be really really nice to learn that and also I am learning with you and you are le learning with me, that is really important. So we can see also the stop menu here, how to stop the turbines reduce uh, the power of auxiliary systems, shift the lever on telegraph on, on the stop position and close the steam valve uh, before the turbine. As we do it uh, on our main engine or our uh, main engine with fuel, we also put our telegraph on stop and that's why uh, as the steam makes the work uh, of the fuel is something uh, we can compare on that. Also open the drain valves of the turbines. This thing we do also on our turbines, for cargo turbines, uh, for the drain, all the uh, moisture and the condensate that is inside the turbine. So we will uh, make a prolonged life of our equipment. Uh, what else? Switch the turning gear on auto position and rotate to binds by 2 hours after stop. Just check it how much time it needs to turn after stop because this is a big turbines. Uh, there is a lot of uh, parts there included and uh, the turning it's necessary for sure to remove all the moisture inside the turbine. Close oil valves on oil cooler, after that switch the circulating pump and later the condensate pump uh, to stop position. Uh, switch the lubricating pump on stop, after that position and close the steam before the injectors. Switch the turning engine on stop position, boiler stop, switch the burners 3, 4, stop position. Uh, this about the burners, ok, you can do it after the turbine stop, you can immediately stop them to not have uh, excess consumption of uh, the steam. But uh, the vacuum it's necessary to draw all the, all the steam, all the condensate that remaining here and to make it clear. So, uh, as it right here, it's really, really correct uh, and proper uh, to follow these steps. It's really, really uh, designed properly. Fill water uh, to the boiler top, water glass switch and supply water pump on start position. Open valve of the boiler, safe face blow. So after that, you can also open the surface blow to clean uh, any remainings on the boiler surface. Uh, switch the burner number two on stop position. Fill water to the boiler to the top of water glass again. Open valve of the bottom uh, blow. Fill water boiler to the top of the water glass again. Switch the burner number to stop position. Switch water supply in auto. Switch compress air. Power boiler hit to stop. Okay, so we can see that we can control here all these things. And what we will do, we will operate uh, our boiler as it stated here. Uh, really, I will tell you, I have never operated this system, but we will follow the steps, and uh, I believe that we will uh, make it really, really good. So we have also our oil system here, which have some gravity tanks. The gravity tanks was made for the reason that 
if for some reason our lubricating pumps are stopped or we have uh, uh, some interruption of lubricating pumps so the oil from here by gravity will lubricate the reduction gear and the turbines because they are turning on high speeds and the thing that we need to prevent from damaging our turbine pumps is that there is always supply of our lubricating oil so from the gravity tanks the oil passes some some filters here and i will use uh, my pen here to show that this is our gravity tanks which contain the oil we have also a overflow here and some filters in this position after that the oil travels here lubricate the reduction gear and also uh, our turbines our turbines uh, are lubricated with pressure from 0 0.7 megapascal to 0 0.14 megapascals uh, after that from here when the lubricating oil finish its work the oil is passing again some filters to protect our pumps here and clean also and these pumps supply with pressure of 0 0.5 megapascals and then passing some filters again as you can see there is a lot of filters because the oil must be as much fine as possible and after that from 60 degrees the oil cools down to 40 degrees and again uh, return to the system back here again so this is the cycle of the oil next thing that we will see is our fuel system our fuel system which is uh, contains with our daily tanks possible to be settling or service tanks here after that uh, we have a temperature of 50 degrees here which is probably enough for that kind of boilers and for that kind of consumptions and uh, after that some filters passing we have increase of pressure here from this point to 4 megapascals we have two fuel pumps then we have heaters again which for sure uh, increase the temperature of the fuel depends of the quality uh, of the fuel and also it will be depends from the viscosity which is needed uh, by the specified fuel which we are burning on our tanks so after the fuel heaters and viscosimeter will give the signal to the steam for heating this fuel and let's say that we achieve 130 degrees here our oil will pass again fuel oil will pass again some filters and then will be sent to the boiler and to our burners which is located here we have four burners in the total so if we will stop our boiler the fuel will be circulated here and back again uh, to some fuel tanks as you can see we have some auxiliary pump here and some fuel tank maybe this is a uh, for some initial fire of the boiler or maybe this is some additional pump uh, depends on the stages of the boiler so if some of you you have some experience uh, write down uh, some comments about this auxiliary pump or fuel system uh, what is the purpose of that one it will be very very interesting to hear that also we have uh, some control systems of the boiler which is really really necessary for keeping the fire there uh, and 
keeping our burners controlled at all times. These controllers is described such air controller, uh, there is a load controller and we have also a fuel controller. Fuel controller it's uh, regulated dependent and fuel controller and air controller dependent from the load it's needed. So when the load and the set point achieved our air control and fuel control will be adjusted properly and then they will remain there. If the set point will be changed these uh, controllers will give additional fuel to increase or to decrease until the set point will be uh, achieved. At the point when set point will be achieved a signal will be sent to air controller and fuel air controller to remain locked there in a appropriate position for the load desired. We have also our blower which supply air to our boiler and this is the most important things that a boiler needs. It needs air, fuel and a proper regulation. Let's see the next step here. Let's see the next sketch. We have turbine uh, scavenging drainage. We have our high pressure turbine, low pressure turbine, which is also a reverse turbine. And all the drainages here going to the manifolds and fr from there to condenser. So all this water will be back to the condenser and will be reused again. So we have a closed loop of our system. For sure there will be losses from the hot well tanks and from the evaporation from some open tanks and uh, that is true but we have a closed system. Uh, also this kind of turbines can be called external burning uh, system because as we know the burning uh, takes effect far away from the turbines inside the boiler and then uh, the steam is generated will be supplied to the turbines. Uh, on the other hand we have our internal combustion engines which is uh, most used on our days nowadays and all the thermal energy uh, that is burning inside the engine and all the thermal energy from the fuel directly uh, pushes the pistons down and rotate the propeller uh, which is different from steam turbine where the burning take place in the boiler and all this steam will supply all this thermal energy and the load to the turbine uh, engines. So drainage is also very important and as we can see here a difference from a high pressure turbine which is here uh, we have also as you can see more drainage system here because we have more steps here to take all the energy from our steam and as you can see uh, our steam engine as it ends becomes bigger. So what is going on here? As we see on the boiler and here is the inlet to our turbine and here is the outlet. As you can see also the size is different. Uh, the pressure is really high when uh, the steam enters the turbine but through the time and as the pressure releases here and gives it energy and travels around uh, these parts of the turbine will be given and the volume of the steam will be increased. So that's why 
the parts here it's much much bigger and the outlet also it's much much bigger here when you press something it really becomes small okay this is you must have in your mind when you release it then it takes a lot of space and that is how it looked like and also you can understand it in different things you can understand also in air conditioning where uh, the high pressure is small and the low pressure is bigger in all systems is almost the same thing because the media that we are using in one case steam uh, steam steam also can be compressed and also uh, freon can be compressed all these gases and liquids uh, have for sure their properties but they are compress, uh, compressible uh, on some point as we know liquids are not compressible uh, and it's also really really dangerous so that's why we need a proper drainage here we try to avoid any water and condensation to be uh, stuck here for the reason if we have accumulation of our water here uh, our blades will be broken as uh, we need a superheated steam a really really pure superheated steam which will be uh, completely dry and will give as much as possible uh, energy and efficient uh, from the boiler to the turbine and next of our propeller for sure these all things matters uh, for the life of the turbine itself it's really really important that and as the pressure increases we also need to have as much as possible a proper and a very very fine control of our chemicals that we are added on the boilers as the pressure increases everything increases and also the difficulties increases uh, to manage this water and such systems for sure the piping is much much stronger than in our system that we are that uh, we are working on board the vessels are designed for sure in higher pressures the thickness of the piping is really big but it's always necessary to be careful uh, that uh, details so let's see that uh, this is our next stop here the supply water purification system and we have our boiler our feed pump our deaerator our proportional pump and our condensate tank here in our condensate tank we have a pure water a pure distillated water which is uh, chemically uh, we cannot say cleaned uh, better we say chemically added to make some improvements of water uh, qualities which is really really necessary for the cleanliness of the boiler to reduce uh, the effect of uh, alkalinity because we do not like our metals working as a galvanic effect which is also really important for the life of the boiler and of the system uh, at all so we have our condensate tank which we keep uh, the temperature uh, about from 80 degrees to 90 as we have seen in all steam uh, system it's really to keep that one we have also a pipe here which durates any uh, bubbles from the system the water comes here and calms down in this tank so any bubbles will be traveled here and evaporated so we have a pure condensate water to be drawn here and send it to the aerator we will see later what the deaerator does 
and uh, the for sure as it show its name it's the array the array to take out the error also as we see and not the yes the air and uh, the air what contains more oxygen and uh, other things other gases like nitrogen which is uh, about 70 percent 21 percent oxygen but this oxygen is enough to make uh, the effect that oxygen make like rust and a quick dissolve of the metals the oxygen itself it's really really a, a fuel a really really fast burning thing that can make damage to everything that contacts it and it's extremely flammable when the concentration it's uh, above uh, some limits so after the deurator we have our feed pump our water we already deurated and we can send to our boiler as you can see the water enters here on the bottom and then it will be heated up and slowly by the natural circulation here will be sent here to the steam drum on the top as we know and as we tell previously the hot water will go always up and will take some circulation here so we have some proportional pump a tank of water here with purification medium which also be supplied here and keep our system uh, properly so uh, for me it's something like that we can sell this is a chemical dosing pump and we can see the difference from the pump here because this pump is some kind of uh, high pressure pump because just imagine here uh, we have 60 bar uh, we have a different environment it's something just like uh, Jupiter there and we need to have access with some equipment to send some chemicals to protect uh, from this violent environment so now dear friends we have finished uh, our information about the system we will see also something in the next video in the part three we will see uh, some information about uh, the boiler here some turbines we will describe all these cards and all the parts uh, step by step so check the part three check the part uh, one also the previous and don't forget to subscribe and to press the bell button for any further notifications uh, check the previous video also you will uh, have a very very nice uh, videos and some tips about uh, marine engineering thank you that you have stay tuned until the end of this video and see you in the next video bye bye